Hi, my name is Tina Gossner. I am a member of Coggenshaw Valley Education Foundation and I volunteered to do a little craft slash art workshop about marbleized printing. Now marbleized printing is actually an ancient craft back to the fifth century. They were doing it in Japan and they would make a letterhead and just do a little bit of marbling in the top corner. From there, it very slowly spread through Turkey and Persia, and it took it seven centuries to finally reach Europe. Now, if you think about in this day and age, it could spread in one day. Back then, it took seven centuries. So by the 15th century, they were doing marbleized printing in England and, well, across Europe. And, um, Eventually, by the 19th century, it hit its heyday. There were actually entire workshops set up where they were doing marbleized printing. The main countries were Germany, the Netherlands, and France. A lot of it was done to be put into books. So I have a few samples. This book is from 1837. So you can see how they marbled the fly leaf. This one, they actually did the cover as well. And I don't know if you can see that, but they would do the edges of the book. I can't imagine this. It's like incredible. The, it's so tiny. And then I have another one that's more up to date. This one's from like 1930s. They did a little bit on the cover more like a bleeding print, but then inside you can see the really beautiful marbling. So they would print this separately, let it dry, and then they would glue it to the outside cover and they would actually glue it to an extra piece of paper. So that was marbleized printing in 1930s. And then I have one that I did with one of my kids many years ago where they would make books at school and I would go in and we would do marbleized printing. And it's such a magical process that for the kids, it, it's really a cool thing to do. So in the past, way back in history, they obviously didn't have access to liquid starch. Um, so what they used was they would take big pots of boiling water and they would add red seaweed to it. Um, seaweed, if you extract, you can extract the carrageenan out of it, which is a gel type um, substance. substance. <laughs> and it's used commonly now in foods to thicken things. So that's what they used. The other thing that they added was called ox gall, which you can still buy today. Ox gall is taken from the liver of a cow, ooh, and mixed with alcohol. What it does is it helps the paint to disperse on the surface. I'm not, don't need to use ox gall. Instead of that, I'm using dish soap. Any brand will do. Um, and that just helps, like I said, to make the paint disperse. Other things that you need for this project. You need an aluminum pan. You need paper towels. Acrylic paint. These happen to be a little bit better grade of acrylic paint, but you sh should be able to use any. Just make sure it's not an old bottle of it that's been sitting around because it tends to thicken and not work as well. Um, you need to have something like a comb, a fork that has the tines spread apart. I like to use one of these hair picks. They just seem to work really well. You need a whole bunch of eyedroppers. These, the same as the starch, I was able to order online. I haven't been able to find them other places. I think I have almost a dozen that I've had for years. Um, then you need a container. It's anything that you can pour a little bit of the acrylic paint in. I have mine set on little pieces of wood to angle them down so the paint stays in the corner. You could use a mini muffin tin, any little containers you have around. Um, and then paper. 
So recommended paper is a good quality of construction paper. This is a, a decent construction paper. And the other thing you can use if you happen to have watercolor paper. Both of those papers will work. I found that regular computer paper did not work very well. It's too thin, it absorbs the water too quickly, and just doesn't seem to take the paint. You want to have a trash can right near you. You'll see why in a little bit. And you also need a water source. So I'm right next to my kitchen sink. And next to that, I have some newspaper laid out with a little bit of paper towel. Once I've finished with the print, I can set it out there to dry. So I think we're ready to begin. So basically, you're going to take maybe about a tablespoon of your acrylic paint and put it in your jar and add a little bit of dish soap. They say a drop or two. I found I had to add a little bit more. I think it varies from paint to paint. The only way you know is to mix in a few drops and try dropping it on the starch. If it sinks to the bottom and doesn't disperse, you need to add a little bit more soap. If your paint's extra thick, you could also add a few little drops of water as well. So when you have that mixed up, I already have mine all mixed up, one eyedropper per container because you don't want to have your colors mixed yet. And you just fill a little bit into the eyedropper. I like to come in horizontal and just sort of sit with the eyedropper next to the surface. When I'm ready, I lower it down and just drop a little bit off. It should, hopefully, some of these have been in here a while, it should disperse along the surface a bit. That was not a very good drop. Um, and you can pick your colors, whatever colors you like to mix together. Yeah, that one's going to disperse a little. I don't know if you can see it growing there. You want to put it in gently. The last one I didn't do very gently. And just sort of float it on the surface. It'll do some pretty fun stuff. The kids will really like it where it sort of grows and swirls around. Add a little purple. That one seems a little bit thick, so I'm going to add a little bit more of the soap to it. Like I said, you can always add a little water too and just mix it up. There's a good one. That one's really spreading nicely. Then, once you are ready, you're going to pick up your hair pick, comb, fork, whatever you have, and the kids can certainly do this. And you're just going to, like you would marbling a cake, you don't want to overdo it because then you'll lose your definition, but you just sort of want to swirl it around. Try to break up any clumps you have. Crazy colors. You can always stop and add a little more, like I think I need a little more blue in there. I think I need a little more soap in some of these colors. Now you can see I've got bubbles there. So that's when the toothpick comes in handy, or the, the barbecue skewer. Whoop, maybe, maybe not. Okay, so when you're ready, you're going to take your piece of paper. I'm going to start with construction paper. You want to bend it like this. 
you're going to set the middle down right over the center of it and just let the thing center down flop pick it up and there you go let it drip over the pan for a minute and then you're going right to your sink believe it or not you're going to rinse it off right away it will not take off all the paint there we go and then you're just going to set it down and let it air dry look at those colors that's pretty fun So you can continue to print with this same vat of starch. You do want to take off the paint on the surface. And the way you do that is you just, as if you're printing, you put a paper piece of paper towel in there and pull off the surface. We actually just saw a version of this where you use almond milk and food coloring, same process. So if you have really little kids and you don't want them in the acrylic paint, I haven't tried it, but we saw that online. So, so I'm gonna do one more and try it with the watercolor paper to see if we get a, anything different. Um, I like gold, but to cut let's see let's do a different little different color combo this time the old marble printing they used a lot more dark colors oh that one's going crazy <laughs> look at it <laughs> it's actually just fun if you're okay with letting your kids just play with it it's pretty cool to watch what it does when it hits the surface. Sort of has a life of its own. Chemistry in action. This has almost too much soap in it now. I think it's going crazy. But it's fun. It'll work. You know, it's like... Look at that. That's really fun. Wow. My favorites are the golds. I just think they add something fun to the product. You almost don't even need to stir some of these. They just make cool patterns on their own. I'm just letting it swirl around a little bit on its own and then I'll mix it up. Literally, you could print this right now and it would be a great. But this is fun too. We also saw another version of it, which you couldn't do with kids, but where they did water and they put little bits of spray paint on it. Again, I've not tried it, but. A long way away from using seaweed and ox gall. So I'm ready to print this one. I'm gonna try the watercolor paper. Again, bending it, setting the middle down first, and then just sort of that way you can really let it flop. You're gonna pull it right up. Whoa, baby, look at that one. Isn't that neat? Okay, I'm going right to the sink. I'm gonna rinse it off with some water. Wow. I like that one, but I like blue, so. That's pretty fun. So as when they dry, because there's some starch on them, you may they're going to curl up. So overnight, once they're dry, you may want to layer them under a stack of books. 
to try to get them to flatten. I actually even ironed one the other day between paper towels because I wanted to uh, try to get it flat. So once you have those done, that's your finished product. The question is, what are your kids going to do with these? One great thing, like I said, is to put in the fly leaves if they make a book. I also, here's one I did the other day and made just a little notebook out of that they can use or give as a gift. Um, they're also super to cut up and make little birthday cards or Easter cards. Think of the Easter cards you could do. So. This is the craft, it's pretty easy. Um, the cleanup is easy other than cleaning out the eyedroppers is a little bit of a pain. But um, the supplies, I ordered the starch and the eyedroppers online. They were not a problem to find. The acrylic paint I bought it, you know, you can buy at any craft store like Michael's or Joann's. Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's pretty simple. You're, have some paper around and have a good time with it. I hope you enjoy the craft. Thank you very much. So here's a little follow-up. I wanted to show you how it came out on different papers. The one you're looking at now is done on watercolor paper and you can see how the colors sort of blend and soften. You lose some of the nice clean lines. Right up here is another watercolor paper one. It's gorgeous, it's just a lot softer. And moving over, this one we actually did with photo paper, which sort of surprised me that it worked, but you can really very clearly see the little intricate lines. And then finally, this is the construction paper, which I think came out really great. So it depends what kind of look you're going for. So as you begin the project, experiment with some different papers and see what you come up with. Have fun with this. Take care.